Shireen Cho, and I am leading the organization called FindingTheInBetween.com, in which we are hoping to create urban youth ministry resources written by people of color for folks of color who are working with urban youth. Today, we are talking about how to ask better questions of our young people. Why is this important? A lot of times we as urban leaders, we are obviously dealing with a lot of things that our young people are going through. And they come to us with emergencies, they come to us with dire situations, they have made decisions that have pitfalls and massive consequences. And so we as urban leaders, we are oftentimes in these spaces of urgency. And that tends to create this mindset or this mode by which we become problem solvers for them. We become, as we walk alongside them, ones who will come in and swoop and be the saviors of the day. Yet we need to understand that that is not our calling in the fullest as leaders for these folks that we are doing ministry with. What we want to do is model the way Jesus led his people and led those who he ministered to. What does that mean? It means that every time Jesus was approached and asked questions, every time Jesus was approached with situations, he never responded with what we call close-ended answers. These are answers that were very definitive. These were answers that were, you know, giving direct approach. Instead, what Jesus did was he responded with open-ended questions. He asked questions that began with words like, what? who, how, when, and where. And so a lot of times we as leaders, what we do is we get a situation brought to us or we have questions that are brought to us. And the first thing we want to do is we want to answer them. We want to be the lighthouse. We want to show the way. And what we forget is the reasons why Jesus modeled for us open-ended questions. See, we as urban leaders, we are not here to simply develop young people by having them regurgitate the, the correct answers. We're not here to spoon feed the answers to them. Instead, what we want to do is we want to develop them to be critical thinkers and critical processors. Why is this so important? Because Jesus knew that he was not going to be with his disciples, both women and men. He knew that he wasn't going to be with them for forever. He knew that he was going to leave. And the fact of the matter is, is that we are not going to be in the lives of our students for their entire life. Some of us might have magical scenarios by which we will develop these friendships with our young people and we'll go for 30 or 40 years. But for the most part, a lot of them will leave our youth ministry, they'll enter into adulthood, they'll go to school, they'll get jobs, they'll start families. And if we have missed this opportunity by which we can help them develop as critical thinkers and processors, then we've really done them a disservice. And so I want to challenge you, how can we be better models of Jesus in our students' lives? How can we, when we are approached, understand that we are preparing them for a life of head by which we are not always going to be available to be the problem solvers in their lives? What we want to do is know that as Jesus said to us in John 14, 12, that his people, the, the folks who are going to do the work on the ground, the disciples that he knew he was going to leave, he promised whosoever believes in him would do even greater works than he. And that's what we need to remember. We're here to train our young people because they're going to grow up to do even greater works than we did. So how do we do that? That begins by asking better questions. That begins by asking open-ended questions. When students come to us and they have problems or situations, instead of responding immediately with a definitive solution for them, what if we take a moment and we ask them, well, what do you think the next step should be? Who do you think that you should go speak to? What would you do? Where can you go? How will this be beneficial? Let's ask some questions so that instead of just taking the answer and being robots and obeying us, they would take the open-ended question and begin to process and think about what would I do? How would I go about this? Who should I go talk to? So in that sense, instead of us becoming the rescuers of their lives, 
they would begin to develop and become transformed to be rescuers of their own lives by the power of the Holy Spirit who gives them wisdom as they are processing, as they are working, as they are, you know, diving in and wrestling with the next steps moving forward. I know this is a risk. A lot of times we think, you know, if we give them the answer, if we provide the solution in the way, then we're helping them out. We're being a lamp unto their feet. And yet, and yet, that might work in the short run. And it might be less risk in the short run. But in the long run, we're doing them a disservice. Sure, they might choose incorrectly. They might not have all the answers when they're processing early on. But in the long run, as they continue to journey with life and wrestle, they will in 10, 15, 20 years be able to turn around and say, wow, that was so essential for my life because now I have grown up to be a mature, understanding, wise, shrewd person who's leading the church. A lot of times when I began to do this, instead of answering young people with, you know, answers that they're seeking for, I would turn around and ask questions. They hate it. They would get so frustrated and they would be like, Pastor Irene, just answer us. Please just give us the way, show us how to do this. And I will follow the directions. And yet for these students, so much now that they are 30 years old, 40 years old, I am getting responses from them that are saying, thank you so much. What you did, it was so frustrating at the time, and yet you have developed me to be an amazing leader. So I just want to challenge all of us as we are continually being rabbis, teachers, mentors, pastors, leaders in our students' lives. May we model after Jesus and not just spoon feed the answers to those who we are leading, but may we instead ask and elevate the conversation, challenge our young people to come into their own so that as they move forward, they will become truly the next leaders who will in turn elevate conversations and ask better questions of themselves, of their peers, and of those who they will be leading. Thanks so much.